Hey Islanders, Mr. Cummins here. I'm the counselor for students with last names P through Z. I'm here with Ms. Johnston and Ms. Goldman who are gonna introduce themselves real quick. What's up guys, I'm Ms. Goldman. I have students last names A through G. Hey everybody, my name's Ms. Johnston and I have students last names H to O on my caseload. So today as Mr. Cummins goes through all this stuff, me and Ms. Goldman are gonna be in the background asking a bunch of rising 10th grade questions that come up in our offices a lot to help you guys fill out your course selection sheet. All right, you guys ready? Let's do it. All right, so like Ms. Johnson said, we wanna take a few minutes to walk you through the registration process so that we can pick some courses correctly for next year. You hopefully have a nice big packet in front of you that has lots of information to make sure that you have the most prepared decisions that you can make. Now, with that being said, please don't stress out about the process. Myself, Ms. Goldman, Ms. Johnson, we're all gonna meet with you individually uh, to talk about your classes and please know we can answer any questions along the way. So don't get overwhelmed. Don't let it stress you out. We're just here to provide you with information and we'll have plenty of opportunities to answer questions that you may have when we meet in person. So this packet consists uh, with a variety of information. There's others, a series of counseling videos that you should watch before we move any farther. So if you haven't had a chance to watch those, please stop this video and watch our other uh, registration process videos. We'll also walk you through the high school graduation and the college A through G course requirements that you need. We'll review a few four year plans so that you can map out which classes you wanna take through the next three years of high school. And we'll give you the opportunity to work on your own four year plan, as well as going through courses uh, line by line to make sure you pick out all the right classes that you need to have a successful sophomore year. So to start, uh, the first thing you'll see is our high school graduation requirements. You'll see that you need four years of English, three years of math, three years of history, three years of science, two years of PE, ten, uh, one year of visual and performing art, and seven elective classes. One thing that's really important when it comes to the elective classes, when it comes to planning, people get confused and think that only elective classes count in that elective category. However, once you take more than three years of math or three years of science and a fourth science and a fourth history will actually count as an elective, not as a math or a science class. So please don't feel like all seven of your electives have to be from the elective category that you will see later on in this video. Our high school graduation requirements are very similar to the UCA through G requirements so that we are preparing our students to go to four-year college. The big thing to note when it comes to UC A through G classes is that you must earn a C or higher in order to receive that credit to be eligible for four-year college. If you receive a D or an F in a UC A through G class, you will have to remediate it at some point, whether you're doing credit recovery or summer school or retaking the class altogether. But know that you must get C's or higher in your UC A through G requirements in order to make sure that you're staying on track for four-year college. So you'll see uh, the classes are broken down by letters. So the A, that's gonna be your social science, world history, US history and government. B is English, C with math, D with science, E for world language, F for visual and performing arts, and G for approved academic elective. So when you hear the saying UCA through G, each letter just corresponds with a different subject that you can take at school. Ms. G and Ms. Johnson, do you guys have any questions about our high school graduation requirements or UCA through G requirements? No, but I'm looking at these four-year college plans, Mr. Cummins, and I don't understand. Why do I have to take the advanced track in order to be eligible to apply to a UC campus? No. So the first four-year plan we want to lay out is the basic four-year plan that you need to be college eligible for a four-year institution. You don't, as you'll see on the college prep A through G, there's not even one AP class on there. You don't have to take every P that AP that we offer in order to be eligible for four-year college. As long as you are taking classes uh, that you have strengths in, then maybe we might consider an AP class in a subject you like and it's strong in. But if it's a subject you don't like that much, we're gonna encourage you to not take an AP at that level. So don't feel like you have to take every AP that we offer in order to be able to go to four-year college. The next track you'll see is the advanced track. So if you know, you're thinking about Ivy League schools, Stanford, you wanna to go to the super competitive schools, you might wanna think about this advanced track where you will see more AP classes littered throughout the four years. 
Keep in mind, like mentioned earlier, you do not need to take every AP we offer. Our counseling department, we are gonna recommend you go for APs and classes that you like, you're passionate about, and you're strong in, and maybe classes that aren't as strong for you, we don't take APs in those. So for example, some students tend to be more science and math heavy, but not so strong in English and social science. So if that's you, go for APs in math and science, and maybe think about regular English and regular history. If you're the opposite and you're really strong with reading and writing and you like English and history, maybe we go for APs in those subjects and we don't worry about going for APs in science and math. So don't feel the pressure that you have to take every AP out there. Uh, but if you are thinking about competitive colleges, we will need to make sure we're taking some AP classes along the way. The next pathway that you'll see is college prep uh, for your plan with IEP support. So. If you have an IEP, that doesn't mean you're not gonna to go to college. We're gonna make sure you're taking all the classes you need to still be eligible and be able to apply to four-year colleges. And this is gonna be the roadmap for you as you think about the classes you wanna take over the four years of college. Lastly, for our COSA students, uh, we have mapped out how you want to maximize your schedule by taking all your UCA through G requirements on top of the COSA classes that you're gonna to need to take as well. Keep in mind for COSA, your classes will be fourth period and fifth period, whereas students who do not have COSA will only be allowed to take up to fourth period. Mr. Cummins, why does it say COSA twice? If I'm going to 10th grade and I'm in COSA, I see it twice in my schedule. So for since our COSA classes are fourth and fifth period, you are going to have to take them every term that we have. So in term one, you're going to need COSA classes fourth and fifth period. And in term two, you're going to need COSA classes in fourth and fifth period as well. So that's why it shows up twice. But that's a great question. I'm a ninth grader in digital media arts, and I don't have a fourth period COSA class. Does that mean that my COSA class might be second or third period? So great question, Ms. Johnston. Yes, for digital arts, their uh, COSA classes are spread out throughout the day. So you may have one of your academic classes fourth and your COSA class second or third, but you still, one of your five periods will be COSA, actually two of your five periods will be COSA and your other three periods will be academic or elective classes. Great question. So the next thing we'd like to do now that we've kind of mapped out our four-year plan, we want to walk through your 10th grade classes and help you select the classes that are going to be the best choice for you to set you up for success. Keep in mind, everybody must enroll in a minimum of six classes, so you can take up to two off rolls, which we'll get to in a, in a little bit, but nobody can take less than six. You do have the opportunity to take up to eight if there's other classes that you're interested in, so you have the choice to either take six, seven, or eight classes. And you ask, well, why would I take seven and not six or eight? For some of you that play a sport for one term or have something going on for one term and not the other, you could choose to take four classes in one term and three classes in the other. So along our UC A through G requirements, we have laid out your classes in the letter order. So the first would be A, social science. Keep in mind, you may not have taken social science as a ninth grader, but all 10th graders have to take social science. So you have your choice between world history and AP world history. There is a big difference between the regular and the AP class. So if you're not the strongest reader or you can't handle a fast paced class, we don't recommend the AP world history for you. However, if you're interested in history and you're a strong reader and you can handle a fast lecture based class, an AP World History would be a great class for you. Mr. Cummins, mm -hmm. I really want to get into a good college, so shouldn't I take AP World History, although history isn't my favorite subject? Well, if you're not going to do very well in the class, then it's not going to help you get to college if you're going to get a C, D, or F just to survive the class. So like we mentioned earlier, you don't need to take APs in every single subject. If history is not a subject that you do well in, then we don't recommend that you do the AP class. Keep in mind that an A in the regular class will always look better than a C or a D in an AP class. Okay, Mr. Cummins, I think I'll take college prep world history, but what does the F mean after AP world history? So for certain classes, they'll be designated as fall or spring. Not every one of your classes you will, will you have that option, but for some that say F or S, that designates which term the class will be offered. So as you see the F, 
After AP World History, that means that AP World History is going to be offered only in the fall. All right, thanks, Mr. Cummins. Mm -hmm. So now that we've done our A, our social science, we move on to B, into English. Uh, so once again, everybody has to take English. There's no choice in there, but you do have a choice of whether you want to take English 10 or English 10 honors. Very similar to history. Uh, it really depends on how strong a reader you are. If you are a strong reader and writer, then we do encourage you to try and go for the English 10 honors class. But if you are not a very strong reader and don't like to read as much, or maybe not as strong of a writer, it's probably better for you to take the regular English 10 class. Mr. Cummins, why does English 10H say 5.0 weight pending approval? What does that mean? So the first thing you'll notice is that English 10H is in bold, whereas English 10 is not. Every course that you see on this course sheet that's in bold, that is a weighted course. And that means that you get an extra GPA point for taking that class. So that's why English 10 is in bold because it's supposed to be a weighted class for next year. In the past, English 10 honors was not a weighted class and we are in the process of getting it cleared to be an honors class. So that's why you'll see the weight pending approval next to that class. But we do plan on being able to offer English 10 honors next year as a weighted class. That's a great question. Mr. Cummins, I don't like history that much. I hated it in middle school, but I think I, I'm a pretty good writer and I really loved English 9 and I got an A and a B plus. Can I choose English 10 honors? Absolutely. It's your choice for each subject. So you don't have to do all APs or no APs. If you feel like you don't like history and you don't want an AP there or an honors, that's fine. But since you do like English and you feel like it's a strong, so strong subject of yours, I would encourage you to try for the English 10 honors class. Mr. Cummins, do I need to get teacher recommendation to take an honors class from Mr. Dwinell? It helps and will strengthen uh, your course selection. However, it's not absolutely required. Thanks, Mr. Cummins. But recommended. So next we wanna move on to C and math. And math gets a little bit more tricky because you can do this thing called sequencing. The good news is hopefully some of you sequenced this past year as freshmen, so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. But for those of you that have no idea what I mean by sequencing, for math and a few other subjects that we'll mention later on, you can choose to take two of them in the same year. So for example, if I took integrated math one as a freshman, I could choose to take integrated math two and integrated math three as a sophomore, and that would be called sequencing my math classes. Now you may be a little bit nervous thinking, oh, well, what if I get both my math classes in the same term? That will not happen because as you can see, again, there's an F and an S listed after these course codes. So uh, if you are planning on sequencing your math class, you're gonna wanna put the F and the S after your course code. If you just plan on taking one math class next year, then you don't need to put the F or the S after your course code. Mr. Cummins, I took math one as a ninth grader in the fall, and then it was making me nervous not to have spring term two math. So I wanna take math two and three as a sophomore. So should I be entering 4515F and 0211S in student view in my course selection sheet? Well, if you took integrated math two as a freshman- No, yes. Mr. Cummins, I took integrated math one. Oh, so great question. You cannot skip a level of math. So if you took integrated math one as a freshman, you're gonna to need to take integrated math two as a sophomore. And if you wanna to choose to sequence, you could do integrated math two and integrated math three. Yes, if you are sequencing your math classes, you need to put the F and the S after the course code. But if you are not sequencing them and only planning to do one math class next year, then you do not need to include the F or S. I think I want to take math two and three next year, Mr. Cummins. I think that sounds like a great idea if you're a strong math student and you like the class. So you'd want to put 4513F for your integrated math two in the fall and 4515S for your integrated math three in the spring. I definitely mind, think I'm going to do that because I don't like history. So I'm going to double up on math because I feel very strong in math. 
I think that's a great idea. And keep in mind that because you have sequenced your math classes, that's going to count as two courses in the far right column and not just one. So as we keep track, make sure you have two there. So the next is D, lab science. Uh, based on what you took as a freshman, is probably going to dictate what you want to take as a sophomore. So if you took biology as a freshman, then you're going to want to sign up for chemistry as a sophomore. If you took chemistry as a freshman, you have the choice to do regular biology or AP biology. In mind that AP biology is a pretty rigorous class where there's a lot of information that's covered in a short amount of time. So you wanna be a strong reader uh, and a strong test taker if you wanna sign up for AP biology because it's a very dense subject. If that's a little nerve wracking for you, then we recommend that you go for the regular biology class. Mr. Cummins, I really like biology this year as a freshman. Can I take AP biology and just skip chemistry? Well, that's a great question. Have you taken chemistry yet? I haven't taken chemistry, but I'm willing to take it later if I can take AP bio next year. I would love for you to be able to, you, to go down that pathway. However, chemistry is a prerequisite for AP biology and chemistry is really an, a re prerequisite for all AP science classes. So. You must take science or you must take chemistry before you can move on to an AP science class. If I take chemistry this year as a sophomore, then I can take an AP science class or two science classes my junior year, Mr. Cummins? Absolutely. Okay, then I think I'll just take chemistry. Also, if science is a class that you really like, you could choose to take two sciences in the same year if you want to. They're not ne necessarily considered sequencing them, but you could choose to take two sciences if you want. Keep in mind that our math and our science classes are aligned. So biology is supposed to have the math level of integrated math one, chemistry has the math level of integrated math two, and physics has the math level of integrated math three. So if you are planning to take more than one science class, just make sure that you have also taken the same level of math so you're not gonna be seeing concepts of math that you haven't seen in your class already. Mr. Cummins, can I take AP Environmental Science or Marine Bio and get out of Biochem or Physics by taking one of those other science classes? Eventually, you will be able to take AP Environmental Science and Marine Biology. However, you must complete the Biology, Chemistry, and Physics pathway first before you move on to Marine Biology or AP Environmental Science. Great question. Because keep in mind that for CHS graduation requirements, you must pass biology, chemistry, and physics by the time you graduate. Okay. Okay, moving on to world language. Some of you may have started world language last year. Some of you may have not. So a lot of us are probably at a variety of levels in terms of what we wanna put on our course selection sheet for world language. Keep in mind that the college requirement for world language is the second level of a world language class. That means Spanish two or French two. Once you have completed one of Spanish two or French two, then you will have met the college requirement. However, most competitive colleges do recommend that you do a third year in the same subject. So doing Spanish one, Spanish two, and then French one, that does not count as three years of world language. It must be Spanish one, Spanish two, Spanish three. Now, also when they say three years, keep in mind, it's really much more about the level. So once you pass Spanish or French two, that's gonna meet your college requirement. And if once you pass Spanish three or French three, that will meet your college recommendation. Mr. Not all of our students go through all th the third level, uh, but as long as you meet the second level, that will meet your college re rec requirement. Hey, Mr. Yes, Coleman. What if I heard we were offering a dual enrollment American Sign Language next year, which sounds super cool. Can I take that as a world language? Because I don't see it as a world language option. Yes, you will find that class under our dual enrollment section, which we will get to in a second. One thing to know with our American Sign Language class is it counts as the second level. So it's the same level as Spanish 2 or French 2. So it will meet the college requirement However, it'll be a little bit harder to meet that college recommendation of getting to the third level because we will not offer the third level of American Sign Language. But if you're just looking to meet the college requirement, uh, American Sign Language will fulfill that. And for those of you that are only planning to do two years of world language, 
as long as you take another academic class in place of the third level, colleges are gonna see that uh, as, as just fine. So don't feel like you have to take Spanish three or French three if, if it's just not the subject for you. As long as we get to Spanish two or French two, that'll meet that college requirement. But if you don't do the third level, we are gonna wanna replace that with another academic class in your schedule. Mr. Cummins, I think I'm going to take French one because as a freshman, I did not want to take a world language because I was scared of the homework and I wanted to make sure that my grades were okay while I was getting used to high school. So if I take French one this year, can I take French two and three as a junior and still get to that third level? Absolutely. So similar to math, you can sequence world language. You can take two world language classes in the same year. Just make sure that when you're signing up to sequence that you're putting the first course code with an F at the end and the second course code with an S at the end. So we make sure we get those classes in separate terms. Great question. So moving on, we're getting to the part of your schedule where you really have the choice of what you wanna do to fill out your schedule. So we've got a few different categories, F, visual performing arts, you do need to complete one year of a visual and performing art to be four-year college eligible. There are multiple spots throughout your schedule in all four years to be able to take those classes. So while it's great to get it out of the way as a sophomore, don't feel pressure like you absolutely have to. If you want to take it as a junior or senior, you will have options to fulfill that visual and performing arts F category at any point in high school. We also have some A through G college prep electives. These tend to be more of our academic elective classes. So as I mentioned earlier, like if you're not gonna go for Spanish three or French three, you would likely wanna have another academic elective in your schedule to replace that college recommendation. A through G college prep electives are a great way to fill that spot in your schedule. So we, you'll see we have a handful of AP classes we also have some regular classes sprinkled in through our A through G college prep electives. So these are a great way to add a little bit of rigor to your schedule. Mr. Cummins, why are there a bunch of letters after the college prep electives? So we're just trying to let you know what category that those classes will fall under. Most of these classes you see a G after because they will fulfill your one year academic elective in the G category. However, for example, when you look at AP Human Geography, you see an A, or AP Computer Science Principles, you see a D. I just mean that those, count, those classes will count as a G and as those other categories as well. So the A for AP Human Geography means it will count as a social science. AP Computer Science Principles with a D after it, that means that it counts as a lab science. So just know that that uh, lowercase letter after just refers to what A through G category the class will satisfy. But keep in mind that all of the classes in that category will also satisfy the G category as well. Mr. Cummins, <laughs> uh, as a sophomore, do I have to take PE? Because I know as a freshman I did, but now do I have to? No, do you have to take PE? No. Do you, should you take PE? Yes. At some point before you graduate, you, you have to take a second year of PE. The counseling staff, we'd like to encourage our students to take that PE class as a sophomore, get it done, get it over with, so you'll have more options to be able to take other things you'll be interested in as a junior and a senior. However, if your schedule is already full of other classes that you want and PE didn't fit in there, you can choose to take PE as a junior or a senior. You do have a few options of what you'd want to take for your second year of PE. We have weight training, yoga, ROTC, and hybrid athletic PE. The big one that I wanna highlight for today is the hybrid athletic PE class. For those of you that are athletes, whether for a CHS or maybe you do a competitive sport outside of school, you are eligible to take our hybrid athletic PE class. You want to sign up for hybrid athletic PE during the season that you play. So if you play fall sports, you wanna sign up for hybrid athletic PE in term one. If you play spring sports, then you wanna sign up for hybrid athletic PE in the second term. Where it gets a little bit tricky is for those of you that play winter sports. As the majority of the winter season happens in term one, we want you to sign up for hybrid athletic PE in the fall or in term one to meet that uh, PE requirement. Hybrid athletic PE will always be fourth period and it'll be offered online. So you do not need to stay on campus to, be, to take these classes but you will be able to access the content uh, online outside of school. Thanks. 
The next category you see is other electives. So these are classes that maybe you're interested in. You might like to learn more about them. However, they will not meet UCA through G requirements. Does not mean you shouldn't take them just because they don't meet UCA through G requirements, but just keep in mind that they won't give you that credit towards four-year college. We mentioned earlier dual enrollment. So to give you a little more background on dual enrollment, these classes are college level classes. They're taught by a local community college professor from Southwestern College, but they're offered on our campus. And you get both college credits and high school credits for taking the class, which is why they're called dual enrollment classes. You do get a bonus point on your GPA, similar to an AP class by taking a dual enrollment class. And they're typically not as challenging as the AP uh, class might be. And they're not as directed towards passing the AP test because there isn't a test that correlates with the dual enrollment classes. So for those of you that are looking to add a little bit of academic rigor, but are a little bit scared of doing AP classes, dual enrollment is a great way to challenge yourself, uh, get the boost in GPA, and also earn some college credits at the same time. Lastly, we want to talk about uh, off-roll. Hopefully, most of you are pretty familiar what an off-roll is at this point, but an off-roll is essentially a free period that you can choose to have first period or fourth period. The majority of our students who take three classes choose to have that off-roll during fourth period because they have things that go on in the afternoon, whether it's sports, uh, whether it's a job, whether they have other things going on. So most people choose to have fourth period off. However, for those of you who have a really hard time waking up in the morning and don't have so much going on in the afternoon, you could choose to have first period off in the fall and spring and start second period. Also keep in mind that you uh, don't have to have an off roll for both terms. You could choose to have an off roll one term and choose to not have an off roll the other term. How many classes do we have Okay, so Mr. Cummins, I think I get to pick out two more classes. Five, six. I have, yeah, you have six. for two. So I think I'm going to pick hybrid PE in the spring because I play a spring sport and I don't want to worry about PE when I'm a junior or senior. And That's then I idea. think I want to take Mexican and Mexican American cultures in the US. And then I think I have eight courses. So can I turn in my form, Mr. Cummins? Am I all done? Not yet. Let's go up real quick because there's two other classes I forgot to mention on our sheet. So keep in mind that for ASB, there's two different types of ASB students. One is an at-large member and another is elected officer. If you are an elected officer, you need to take both terms of ASB. If you are an at-large member, you only need to take one term of ASB. Also with band, if you are choosing to take band as one of your elective classes, that is a year long commitment and you need to put band for both terms. The last part of the sheet, you'll see COSA. For those of you who are COSA students, you need to make sure that you are putting your conservatory in twice because you will need to have your COSA classes in term one and term two as well. So please make sure to put your conservatory in twice. Mr. Cummins, I'm not going to fill out this part because I only want to take the classes that I picked above. So I think that that's not a very good idea because sometimes classes get full, especially as a, a rising sophomore, there might be juniors and seniors who end up signing up for the classes and getting the first spots and you might not be able to get all of the classes that you want. Also, sometimes you may sign up for a class that we don't get enough interest in and we aren't able to run the class because we don't have enough students in there and it gets canceled. When that happens, you want to have your alternates in there so that we can refer to your alternate list and be able to quickly change your schedule. If you don't put your electives in, the computer is going to pick those classes for you, and there's a great chance you're going to get a class that you're not interested in. Please make sure you enter three alternate classes. And when you see that they're electives, they don't necessarily have to be elective classes. You could choose to maybe sequence math or world language or you could choose to put a second science down as your alternate. They don't always have to be all elective category classes. But please make sure that you enter three uh, so that we can place you in the next class that you would want if we can't put you in the eight that you've selected above. Lastly, you wanna make sure that you put your email, that you sign it, and that your parents sign this sheet. It's really important that you put your email on there because 
uh, during the summer, when we are looking at all these course uh, offerings and trying to put your schedules together, when we notice that a class didn't work out the way you wanted it to, we may try to contact you to give your options on how you'd like to switch your schedule. Your email's not on there. It's not, we're not going to be able to track you down, and we are going to pick the classes that you're in, not you, and you may get a class that you don't want. So please make sure to use an email that people are going to check so that if we do need to get a hold of you over the summer, we have a way to contact you to talk about the options for your schedule. Mr. Cummins, do I have to put my Coronado email or can I use my Gmail? Which one should I put? You should put whichever one you are actually going to be checking over the summer. Mr. Cummins, I don't check email. Can I put my parents' email? Yes. If your parents check email more than you do, then please put your parents' email because if we're emailing you during the summer, it's because we need some time-sensitive information. And if nobody's checking it and get, getting back to us, you're likely not going to get the classes that you want. Mr. Cummins, what am I supposed to do with this form when I'm done with it? Can I throw it away? No, you want to bring those in to your counselor for your counseling meeting. Remember that you, every student will meet individually with either me, Ms. Goldman, or Ms. Johnston to pick your classes. So you're going to want to bring that uh, sheet to your counseling meeting so that we can go over and make sure that you and your parents have discussed the course offerings that you want to take as a sophomore. Mr. Cummins, I'm going to lose that form. Can I just turn it into the front office when I'm done with it? That works as well. Ms. Redding will also collect the forms in the front office. Thanks, Mr. Cummins. You really helped me pick my classes. I can't wait to meet with you individually. Well, I can't wait to meet with you as well. It's one of the favorite parts of our job. So we look forward to meeting with you individually and setting you up for success for your sophomore year. Thanks, everybody. And any questions you may have, feel free to reach out to us, the counseling staff, at any time. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Bye.